Right then, guys. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, mini yo-yo. Low wing. Yes, low wing version. So this one will be slightly modified to my other constructions. So I'm going to uh, make the fuselage a little bit different on this one. It's going to have a laminated outer edge. And I've drawn up a fuselage on the um, CAD. And um, yeah, I'm just going to start laying it up. So let me turn you down. See, I'm just going to move them. Let me turn you down and show you uh, what we're talking about. Gee, what I've done is this. That's pretty, isn't it? The wing is going to be down there. Tailplane will be in a slot there. The pilot will be sitting here. <laughs> and just drew a wheel on. So I've got some 3 16th for 1 16th. It's reasonably flexible as well, so it saves me stripping some up. It's going to be profile fuselage again, so flat. Uh, but I'm going to bend this up. Uh, first thing to do is, I'll come to that in a minute. First thing to do is, a couple of people have asked me about the plastic I use. I just use any plastic I can get hold of, really. There we are. Doesn't that look nice? Just to keep things in position a little bit, I'll just pop a couple of pins in initially. Now, normally, when I do uh, laminating, I would cut out from white uh, board that shape and laminate it into that. But I'm just wondering if there's a quicker way to do things. So I'm going to experiment with this and just see if um, if I can sort of laminate it. So normally you damp it. Well, I'm going to have to damp it to go around here. Normally you damp it, smear it with white glue and put the next piece on. That's one way of doing it. And then pin it in position. I'm going to get the pins as vertical as possible as well, actually, because if they're not, then the... Uh, the wood sort of bends it the wrong way in and out. You want it vertical. Here's a little tip for you. When you put pins against uh, wood, especially if it's damp wood, you will leave a, an indentation where the pin was. It doesn't matter so much on the inside because no one's going to see that. Well, here's an idea. If I put the pins in here now, while it's dry and then I can take the pins out but I've already got the holes because the holes are already there I don't have to muck around a little bit that's a short one so what I'll do I'll put some water on that get it soaking the other thing you can do is to put these actually soaking in a basin of water or bath or whatever uh, to get it nice and pliable and if it still won't go just steam it laminating if you've never done it it's so easy and so satisfying and and the end result is so strong <clears throat> like anyone that's never done it is always surprised at just how easy it was and, and how good the results that they get as well yeah I'm using this speed bond, it's called. It's from the uh, Deluxe uh, people. And uh, get it on the wood. And it does it. It does grab very quickly, which is quite good. Okay, there we are. Simple. So I'll just pick up those. Pinholes again that I put in there. So that's a very gentle curve with the more um, curved curves. I'm going to have to definitely get it more flexible. So what I'm going to do, I'll just go away and put the kettle on and steam this around. That one is a little bit easier. Steam it around into a shape, into that sort of shape. And it will come back and fit it. Okay, so I've steamed steamed this one. I haven't glued it. What I'm going to do with this is just let that dry in position, and then when I take it off, I can it'll 
keep it shaped I can glue it and just gently put it back in but gluing it and trying to get it in is all very messy a little tip for you find uh, something to wind around so what I did I got it nice and steamy nice and bendy nice and wet and then just kind of like pulled it around pulled it and pu pushed it in that way but it won't snap and it'll hold it so for a minute and when it's cooled it'll stay there so find something handy that you can just just um, wind it around but this one here should just go in there a treat I could damp it slightly just to take that any um, tension out of the wood what I'm sort of hoping to do is to build the wing and then once it's built slide it through the gap in the fuselage and glue it and then I'll have a couple of struts going down from the um, cowl no sorry from the cockpit down to the lead and the trailing edge if you follow on YouTube the likes of Mark Crouch or Mark Robinson um, you'll you'll know that this already this is a great way of doing stuff as they're into their vintage style of model what fine fellas they are as well so there we are I think I'll just let that one dry as well just because I can't proceed I can't proceed until I've got this one dry so I'll glue it all together at the same time and then when that's set in, I've got some 1 16th, so I beg pardon, 3 16th by 1 8th, which I'm going to use as the uprights. I'm going to put 1, 2, 3 there. This one here, I'm going to make a quarter inch by 3 16th because the undercarriage will have to bind to it because this one's going to have oh yeah, a little fixed undercarriage. I mean, look at that. What a gorgeous shape that is. Fun, isn't it? It sure is, Cliff. It certainly is. I've got to cut that off and I figure out which motor I'm using and how I'm going to mount it. Not sure yet. Okay. Let's whip it off. Hmm, there we are. One fuselage. <laughs> so I just thought I'd show you this, guys. I've made a well. I've made a little frame around inside the nose just for this to sit into. Put a bit of ply on the bottom so it doesn't all fall apart. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm either going to cut the ears off the mounting flanges or build something around it to make a little chunky nose. But I think it's gone in there really smart. Actually, I'm quite pleased with that. You just got to make up the fitting for whatever motor you've got okay guys um laid one wing up a couple of things worth noting i've got a 1 8 rib on the f1 r1 i should say um because of the low wing mounting position i need a bit more uh, wood uh, to be able to fix it to the fuselage um on all the yo-yos you don't glue this join between the leading edge and this there's no point you can glue the rib in but don't worry about putting glue on this joint because you're going to be cutting it anyway um, to get the dihedral so this rib is set using the angle little angle that you get in the kit or shown on the plan that'll give you the correct dihedral for the tip then you've got the root dihedral which is slightly different a little bit less which goes against the R1 two uh, pieces of 1 16th laminated around I had to steam those because the wood's a little bit on the hard side, but it went easy enough. So let's just pop this whip, uh, pop this wing off, and uh, get the other one laid up. Try and avoid putting pins through the wood if you can. It's okay here, for instance, because I'm going to cut that piece of wood off. This is just ordinary polythene. Polythene bag, polythene. Use whatever works for you. Just trim this off slightly overlay. Don't like need to put the diagonals in. Depends what you're covering it with and whether you need to add a bit of strength to these ribs before you cover it. 
I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to separate this into two parts yet because it's better if I sand it all in one go. Lovely. Okay, so there's one, one, one wing made. We'll work on that one later. There we go then, guys. I've set it up. We'll let that dry and then I can sand both wings together. That was pleasant. Nice, easy task. <clears throat> okay, so I've been um, carefully sanding the leading edge of this uh, wing and trailing edge of this wing. Uh, it's taken me quite a long time, about an hour, using the long sanding block, carefully bringing down the leading edge to section. Uh, just for your comparison, you can see how chunky it was and how nice and slim it is now. So there's no reason now why I can't separate this joint it's nearly separated anyway because don't forget it wasn't glued look at that isn't that lovely isn't that lovely so now you can see why I've got an 8 inch rib there because I'm going to have two 1 8 ribs and I'm going to uh, stick them in here which is 3 16th so I want to maximize the glued area as much as possible and I'm thinking I'll put down some, maybe one, maybe two supports to support the wing. It's bound to twist a little bit anyway. This is interesting guys, I thought I'd show you. Um, the tail plane I've made out of 1 16th by 8. The plan is adaptable, you don't have to follow it precisely except keep the outlines the same and um, keep it light. This piece of 1 8 steamed really easily to get into that shape because all plans are adaptable. If you're not experienced with building with plans then you don't have to follow them precisely, you can just use whatever wood you happen to have. Another little tip for you is when you're doing something like these bits here, start with the longest piece and if you should stand it short then you can cut it for the next and it's not wasted. If you cut that short, you can cut it for the next. But if you cut it short after that, then you go onto this side, work your way down in size. Don't forget for the end grain of all of these, double glue them, just drop them in a little pile of glue and just take the surplus off. Just let that dry for, well, not long really, a few seconds, a few minutes. And if you've got 30 seconds is fine just to close up that end grain. That's what it looks like guys, something like that. As I was just saying about the wood sizes, I've just went for a bit of 8 plus 16 for the rear uh, elevator ribs. Uh, fixed up the rudder and fin, so let's whip it off. We should be hinging it with the uh, fishing line like I have with the others. So all I've got to do is to sand this final litre section. I started on the front, still got to go around the tip and down the back to bring it down to a section. And then I'll be able to um, call that done. Yeah, okay. I'll get on with this guys. I'll see you back soon. There we are guys, uh, a little mock up. Obviously the wing tips have got to be bent up more, but there it is. <laughs> I've got an idea for colour scheme which could look quite striking, simple but effective. Uh, I've been sanding, so it's coming up now to thinking the final placement of radio gear, getting that sorted and then I can cover it. I've made a little undercarriage up and in my usual fashion bound it to the upright. Well it looks messy that side, let's look at this side. Yes, well there you go. I've also fitted the motor. I've cut off the flanges, focus there, I've cut off the flanges and it's just held in by two little plates of ply. That one's a bit wonky, but who's to know? And that one there, it's got a little key that goes up inside and it's really rigid. It can't go right or left or up and down. It's got a little bit of right thrust, if that will focus or not, and a little bit of down thrust. which is good of course, that applies a bit wonky too but nobody will know. 
I've just glued on the uh, plate for the servo tray. I've painted the wings blue because I'm going to cover the wings in clear um, clear doculum and the tail feathers and the wing tips are going to be actually in blue this blue beautiful blue and so is the fuselage and fin and rudder uh, made some wheels just uh, discs of balsa wood I put a little plastic tube bearing in the middle drilled it out to the thickness um, sorry diameter of the undercarriage and then a rubber ring around the outside having previously uh, filed a little rebate all the way around with rat tail files so they just go on there quite nicely uh, I'm quite pleased with those that's what I've made before I've made those before for my other mini yo-yos in fact there it is but you can't see it up there you can't see the wheels well there's the wheels on the big yo-yo and the little one's exactly the same there's one you haven't seen look a micro yo-yo it's about a six inch wingspan it's coming together really quickly now guys oh by the way the paint i use for the blue um it's just ordinary emulsion paint dulux in this case and uh watered down substantially straight onto the balsa wood you get that lovely blue look because it doesn't go very well where the glue is but you're not going to notice that once it's in the air i may probably have to fit struts we'll see how it goes uh, if i do they'll come down from the top to maybe from one central point down to two points on the wing see how we go with that right so i've painted the structure blue except the bits that need glue in and i've got the iron plugged in and i'm going to now put on some doculum doculum sir uh, so for those that don't know doculum is this stuff it's made for heat sealing in documents document laminator in fact hence its name doculam that's good and the reason i've painted it blue is because it's transparent I think this is 38 micron doculum. You can get thinner than this. You can get thicker as well. But it's heat. Uh, heat sticks with heat and and shrinks as well. But it doesn't shrink very much. And I don't want it to shrink very much on this structure because it's so lightweight. So I'm just going to sort of place it over like that. You need quite a hot heat. It's up to 121 now. See. Um, what I thought I would do actually is not shrink it, um, not really shrink it at all at this end, certainly because I don't want it pulling this ribbon until I've got the wingtip stuck on. So I'm just going to do the usual method of just tacking it here and there. That rib's one eighth, so it's quite solid. This one, I'm hardly putting any weight on it because it'll just break. And you notice I'm taking the heat away from the structure because I really don't want it to uh, shrink at all. Um, and you notice at the moment it's translucent. Well, when it's heated up, it goes completely transparent so and one of the reasons I put I'm going to do blue wingtips is so as I can see it at a distance so there's no point in covering it in clear um, covering and then you can't see it down the end of the hall if I'm flying it indoors this is the stuff we put under tissue it gives it that uh, toughness You want a nice sharp blade as well, as well as uh, nice sharp scissors for this job. And we come round the corner, 
be careful how I handle the structure. It will gain strength as it gets covered and shrink and what have you, but I'm not there yet. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting because I want a little bit of overlap. I'll practice on this end first. Actually, I'll practice all to use scissors. I want a little bit coming around the corner, not very much because it's got a glue, just enough, maybe a millimetre or two. Turnover this side is, is okay, it's acceptable, it's about three or four mil, eight for an inch, but that won't be acceptable the other end, so I'm going to practice just taking it down a little bit more. That's almost the full depth of the rib, and I want to have a maximum amount of area to, to glue balsa to balsa when I put the tip on. Yeah, that's better. It's about a millimetre now. Let's just pop that on. Gently supporting the rib with my finger in behind so as I can put some pressure on it. better got a little lump sticking out there okay let's just now see if I can bring it around this rib and I've really got to support it behind um, otherwise it's going to break and I don't want it breaking at all it's very flexible and this iron, as light as it is, it isn't light enough for this structure. So very gently teasing it around. Okay, so there's one wing panel covered. It didn't take long, did it? I'll just tidy up this leading edge, but otherwise, it's not too bad. It's a little wrinkle there, it may come out, it may not. We'll just have to see. Like any job where you put the finish on, it's only as good as what's underneath it. So the more time you spend uh, working it, the better. I'm just going to put this wing tip on. Yeah, it's still meeting nicely. If I shrunk that, it would pull it away. You could put a piece of wood in there to prevent that. Um, but I, what I'm going to do is glue this to this and then shrink it. And if it pulls the covering on this side a bit, which won't be shrinkable, then it won't matter. So there we are, guys. I'm going to get on with the rest of it and we'll reconvene. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. That didn't take long, did it? OK, so I've got all the pieces covered. I'll stretch this out in a minute when everything's dry. But for the minute, it's time to fix the tip to the main wing panel and uh, get it drying. Right, what I'm going to do is just put them together and hold it till it grabs and then I'll put some pegs on the ribs. I think that's going to look pretty cool actually, clear with the blue, because this doesn't stretch out so it's a bit of a technique getting it to um, stick on. You've got to sort of stretch it and peel it off once slightly if you're quick, but that's it after that. It kind of like melts the plastic a bit. This is the adhesive, uh, spray adhesive, 3M77. Goes on very light, but it's not cheap. But right, there's one on. Uh, one in the middle, I can see some daylight. There we go. There we go. Once you reach this stage, you're laughing. Right, we'll let that set. I'll do the other one and I've got a bit of glue squeeze now, just a very small amount there, that's good. While it's doing that, I can hinge the rudder onto the fin, which I've covered. There's the rudder, covered both sides. And there's the fin, so I can hinge that. Also, I've, since you've been away, I've covered and hinged the um, elevator, elevators. Put the horn on 
so that's ready to slide into the fuselage. In fact, I haven't finished the coverings because I've still got the fuselage to go. How could I? Because I don't normally cover the fuselage on the other mini yo-yos, but this one I'm going to have a go at. Yeah, you can only spray one side. The other side you've got to put on with a spray some adhesive into the uh, a lid and sort of wipe it on. It's not as efficient, but it does it does work. But anyway, waffling on. Back soon. Hour or two's gone by and they've glued on. Quite looking quite nice, quite sharp. So now it's time to join the wings. And I think probably the best way is just to put glue on them, both sides, and then just sort of line them up and pick them up and peg them up, and let them set, and we'll have a wing. Now in theory, they're both presenting at the same angle and in practice they are too. Cool, they should be because that's lined up along the bottom. I don't plan to actually glue it to the fuselage on the top surface. It doesn't need it um, because I've got balsa to balsa along the bottom and that's only what I had on the other mini yo-yos high wing. So that will be sufficient, but I'll probably end up putting some struts down. Well, almost certainly pair of struts, um, blue possibly. So there we are. That's the wing uh, joined. And as, when that's dry, as soon as it's dry, I'll put the iron on it and uh, stretch out the clear. Well, it'll go clear then. And it'll um, pull the tips in and everything will look very smart, I hope. In fact, while you're gone, I think I'll have a go at this fuselage. Covered the fuselage. It's a bit of a um, bit of a mess, <laughs> but uh, it's blue, and that's all that you'll see as it flies by. I keep saying that, don't I? As I was doing it, it's a bit saggy in places. As I was doing it, I was thinking I ought to um, put some fairings on the on the carriage. So I'll definitely do that. Anyway, just got to remove the masking tape at the front and open up the tailplane. Uh, slot and uh, that's a fuselage covered it's a messy old job the covering uh, doesn't go terribly tight but I don't want it to be tight and the blue certainly isn't tight so it, uh, it all matches in as you can see it's a bit wrinkly it won't affect the flight so um, yeah there's the wing looking suitably I love it actually you can make out the blue through the covering, which is nice. Gives it a hue of blue, doesn't it? All the ties it in. That's a great idea. I love it. And uh, yeah, I have trial fitted it slides in a tree. So, um, but as I say, I've got to work on the um, electronics now. And I thought I might put some fairings on the undercarriage legs as well. I'll do that before I put the wings on. Right, a bit more progress guys. I've mounted the board and connected up the push rods. It's quite a long run and they're only one mil. They were bowing a bit in the middle so I've ran, run them through this little straw which holds them in place quite nicely. And um, yeah, they work quite well. So, oh, I've also added some fairings to the undercarriage legs, just one millimeter, probably less actually, half mil ply, just CA'd on and then tissued around, should hold okay. Still got to fit the wheels, but before I fit the wheels, I want to glue the wing in. So, oh, I also glued in the fin and tail plane. <laughs> Went quite well. I mean, the covering all over isn't perfect by a long, long way, but I think the overall effect is, is there and I quite enjoy using these modern materials. So the wing. Again, it's not as tight as it could be in places because this doculum doesn't shrink that much, but it's probably tighter than the blue anyway, so um, I don't really mind. 
So I've had this in obviously, but now we can actually fit it. Now the radio gear is in, so I'm just going to ease it past each rib as we get to the centre. Now what I'm going to do is just glue it along the bottom edge because the top edge is covered with doculum. So I'm just going to put some glue on the bottom edge and that will be sufficient to hold it, especially as I'm probably going to add some struts which I haven't even thought about yet. So let's just put some white glue down this edge. Okay. Pull that into there. I expect I'm going to get a little bit of glue seeping out, but we won't worry about that just yet. As long as it's equal both sides. And square to the fuselage. What I need to do is to, as you can see it wobbles a little bit, what I need to do is to sight it down, at least with a clear covering, I can see if it's uh, central on the fuselage. I need to sight it down top from the top and from the front and pack it accordingly. So what I think I'll do is just put a couple of bottles here, just to stop it moving there, like that. And I'll tell you what else I'll do, works quite well. I'll put a pin either side of the fuse um, undercarriage. The only thing I can't do now is sight down it because the bottles are in the way. So I move the bottles. They probably won't move now anyway. That's pretty good. And I just need a little bit of packing under that wing to swing it up this way a little bit. Nothing like being prepared. That'll do nicely that. Just move this down till it's looking pretty equal. To excuse the noise, it's just cut in. I'm charging the flight batteries. Yeah, there we are. That's looking very pretty in this light. I'm just going to post the picture up on the uh, community tab for channel members to have a sneaky peek look at it. So now what I'm doing is the um, struts. The doculum covering seems to make it them anti-twist but there's not a lot of strength in them if I should bash them. Anyway I've just cut some bolster struts and given them a lick of blue paint. thought I would take them to this top of this reinforcement fuselage bit here and down to the wing but as the struts long enough let's take it down to there. I wonder if I should make a little hole in the fabric covering at this end then I could actually stick it to the bolster upright. Just poke it through. You could say the same here, make a small hole and then it can butt onto the rib. I was just wondering if I ought to cut the cover in there as well, just a little square out, just to put it straight onto the rib. Got quite a small um, fine tip on it. I can just maybe just melt a small hole in there and then melt a small hole in there. I'm going to angle it to fit the rough angle of the strut that's going to go up on there. Yeah, there we go. That one a little bit bigger. could have used uh, some of my string up through there and down to the other side and CA'd it. So we made holes in the wings now. Oh, I'll stick with plan A, I'll do that on the next one. Right, okay. This is where the fun starts. That one goes to the front. I need to sand it. 
needs to be cut to length. Just about there. The ends have to be tapered a certain way, so it's just a matter of offering it up and trial fitting it and sanding it and trial fitting it. A bit long still though. So you get the idea. I'm going to keep working on this and I'll come back when all four are in. So I fitted the struts. And they kind of look they kind of look okay, I guess. I'll get used to it. They sort of taken the eye off the prettiness of it, I think, a little bit, but um, overall, you know, they are functional. So they, obviously there's a pilot to go in, prop to go on. Oh, I've got to fit a piece of um, Velcro to mount the battery. My initial um, offering up of the battery showed that the it needs to be quite a long way forward. If I put it here, which is where I sort of semi-designed it to go, um, this, it's tail heavy. So I want to come as far forward as possible, which is kind of ugly, but it's either that or put some lead in there. Nice nose cone on that. Right, let's have a look. It's usually about a third, maybe sometimes a little bit further back. So it's... Not that far out, look actually, look. That's about 40%. This is why you've got to keep the tail end so light. And that's why I've raked the undercarriage forward a bit to try and bring the weight forward. Okay, so I've put some lead in there. Just cut it in and encased it in the plastic and a bit of super glue. So the battery's sitting up there. I've got a balance quite forward 25 30 percent okay just summing up this build then guys i think it's come out really I, I love the look of it actually it weighs just under 60 grams which is a uh, couple of ounces slightly heavier than the mini yo-yo high wing with the open structure at the back but i think it well it's it's, it, it's got bigger bits here and there bigger undercarriage uh, the covering is a lot heavier, uh, but I think it works. I think it looks great. And uh, I think partly the weight's due to the fact that I've covered in the back of the fuselage. So I've got to compensate at the front, obviously. So, um, yeah, I think it's come out really nice. Looking forward to the maiden flight and uh, just got to put a pilot in there now. When I'm happy with the maiden flight, I'll put some plans up on uh, Shopify if anyone wants to have a go at it. Don't be put off by the uh, laminating. It's really quite simple and very satisfying. Yeah, piece of cake really. Good fun to try. Everyone that tries laminating says I didn't realise it was so easy. So we'll see how this one looks in the air. There it is anyway, the low wing mini yo-yo uh, sport and looking forward to the maiden flight another one rolls off the assembly line i'm getting a lot of fun out of these uh, mini yo-yo designs actually or the yo-yo design in general because there's so much um variety you can put to them ah, I, I love that one actually i think it looks absolutely beautiful the shape of it yeah really very very happy with it yeah See you up the field. We'll do the maiden or indoors, wherever it happens to be. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, it costs you nothing. And give us a thumbs up as well if you enjoy the video. And that helps promote it to uh, a wider audience on YouTube and therefore promotes the hobby. Okay. Thanks very much. See you in the next video. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers. Exciting moment guys, very exciting moment. The maiden flight, the mini yo-yo sportster.
Oh, fossil. Oh, fossil.